Hey guys, this is Slinte. Hope you all had a very good Thanksgiving. <sighs> Fortunately, we're going to have to go into some really bad topics that I am extremely upset about. Very upset. And uh, let's just get into those. Pokemon Sword and Shield. Now, before I even begin this rant, I want to set the record straight and say that I was really excited for this game. I made that reaction video and that reaction was based on whether or not that direct could sell me on the game. And it did. So despite all the controversy and everything that was going on with it, I was dead set on buying the game day one no matter what. But then the week of the release of the game came and it turned into such a huge PR nightmare. There was already people calling out the BS that was going on in this game before and a lot of us were like hoping, well I think all of us were hoping that they fix those problems with the animation and their use models. But then it comes like the week before, or like a couple days before, I think it was like Tuesday for me, uh, when I finally heard the news about how Game Freak lied about redoing the models and giving the Pokemon higher quality animations to make up for why they cut more than half the Pokemon. Now I feel very betrayed because I defended them. If you remember a couple weeks ago, I saw both sides, I was like, I can understand why the negative side is the way they are and I can understand Game Freak because it's kind of unreasonable for them to redo all the models in the time frame that they have, we'll get back to that later. They didn't do that. So now I feel extremely betrayed and I have lost a lot of trust with Game Freak as a whole. And to be quite honest, I'm not going to buy any more Pokemon games until Game Freak puts in the effort that I expect from them. This is Pokemon. This isn't some random indie developer. This isn't some random game made by just one guy. This is a big corporation that owns the biggest media franchise of all time. I am not going to accept mediocrity from this company. I will go back and play the Pokemon games I haven't played and let me tell you, when Sword and Shield came out, I went to GameStop and bought Pokemon Black. And let me say, I've never been more happy to give my money to GameStop in my entire life. Because that game is its really living up to my expectations. That, and I've also been playing this really, really good Pokemon fan game. But let's just remove the fact that the company that is trying to sell you a product lied straight to your face. They also have the force experience share. Why would they force experience share on you when you were able to turn it off in previous games? Me, I hate experience share, especially in Pokemon. Because it makes me more connected to them individually by training them up individually through battle. If I never have to switch to them, then that just completely loses the point for me. Because you think about other RPGs, they balance their games around the experience share. That's why nobody ever complains about it in those games. With this game, actually, in particular, seems like they made the game, then they made experience share. They didn't build it around the experience share like a normal game. And then the biggest thing, the thing I could not believe was in the game like I like I had to re-examine my invisible glasses and just really see what was there and realize the state of this game there is a freaking mouse cursor in the intro of the game a mouse cursor I have never seen that before in my life. A mouse cursor. Just. If that's not a sign of rush development, I don't know what is. Because how can you have like testers go through this game and then say, 
a uh, there's a mouse cursor there and this that's not even the worst part it's not only in the intro but it's also in the outro holy crap never in my 20 years of playing games have I seen this level of incompetence to the point where they have a mouse cursor in the game and no this isn't some Mega Man 10 enemy that's an actual Windows mouse cursor okay like and then of course there's been other things that it's, it's a long list I can't go over all of it but what does this all relate back to development time if they had time to work on this game probably another year looks like it needs they could have ironed out most all of these flaws and tested it and made sure the graphics were up to par making sure the Pokemon were actually new models making new animations given that huge uh, extra amount of time they could have had and they could have really needed it's just very disappointing to see the first ever mainline game turn out like this it's just very disappointing and you know how when people criticize a game they're like why don't you make a game yourself and you'll see how hard it is well people have actually gone in and actually fixed things that are in the game like the infamous tree the Ocarina of Time tree They've actually fixed that. They've also actually removed the mouse cursor. That just happened uh, this week. If you bought the game, tell me how it is. If you didn't, tell me why. I'm out. And one more thing. Let me take a page out of Sword and Shield's book. Death Stranding. Boring, but fun. Why is that sentence so common with this game? Is it boring, or is it fun? Because it can't be both. Because that doesn't make any sense. That's like saying a cheeseburger tastes good, but it tastes awful, or it tastes bland. It can't be both. <laughs> I mean, after I heard all the things that Kojima has been saying about this game, about how he included a very easy mode for uh, people that don't want to play games, <laughs> and then he said that the first half of the game will be boring? Like, who says this stuff to promote their game? He's saying, oh, it's boring, oh, it's the, the actual gameplay for combat wise is optional and there's a very easy mode for people who actually don't want to play games like I, what kind of advertising is that <laughs> so if I'm ever bored or just really that interested in this story then I'll just watch them on YouTube but as far as actually playing this boring game heck no game awards are coming up next week and of course the nominees are a huge joke let's just go over some highlights of course Death Stranding a again boring but fun game nominated for seven categories seven freaking categories unbelievable but I won't say I wasn't expecting it because this is being hosted by Jeff Keighley and him and Kojima seem very uh, oddly close so uh, <laughs> and Control is nominated for a lot as well I actually haven't played it yet. I'm actually planning on playing it uh, very soon so I can see, you know, if these nominees are like, <laughs> you know, warranted. As far as I'm concerned, the game of the year should be Fire Emblem or Astral Chain. And ironically enough, both of them aren't even in that category. They are on this list. Fire Emblem is in strategy game where it has absolutely no competition. And Astral Chain is actually going to be some pretty good competition with Devil May Cry 5 in an uh, action game so I think Devil May Cry 5 also deserves game of the year as well I wouldn't be surprised if Death Stranding took every single category it was in I would not be surprised at all all right and if it doesn't take any other category I wouldn't be surprised if it took game of the year 
I would not be surprised at all. But as we all know, the award ceremony is not the most anticipated part about these shows. It's the announcements. So we got to see what Nintendo and Sony and Microsoft and all these other companies uh, have to offer in terms of like new game reveals. I'm really hoping for some Metro Prime 4 gameplay or possibly in a 3 gameplay. So I'll definitely be tuning in for that at the very least. So if you think back to my Nintendo Switch Online rant video, you'll remember that I said that I skipped so many games this year and last due to some BS going on with it. And Spyro Ignite Trilogy was one of those said games. Why? Well, because the game was incomplete on the disc. They were selling you the whole disc, two thirds incomplete on the disc. So what that means is that you were able to play all of Spyro 1, but only parts of Spyro 2 and 3. But now, in this new reprinted version, they've actually put all three games like they originally should have on the disc. Which is a huge win for everybody that loves Spyro and these remakes. And was the main thing holding me back from buying the game originally. So now, I'm actually going to buy the game. Now if you actually do go out and buy this game, this new version of the game, you have to be careful because for some reason Activision didn't change the box art at all, like it still says internet connection required. I think this is only for the PS4 version, I could be wrong on that, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, it still says internet connection required on the, the new repented versions. The only way you can actually tell is if you look at the actual disc. And it says 2018 and 2019 because the original version that only says 2018 and if it just says 2019 that's also in the new version so you have to be really careful when you're buying this and you probably want to wait until i'd say like after the end of this year to be quite honest because then you'll be able to go into like gamestop and like ask for a copy and like be able to check the disc because of course if you only buy it from like best buy you don't know if that copy is like an old shipment or a new shipment so that's what i'm gonna do or maybe try to like snipe a 2019 version from ebay or something so i guess you could say i lost a game in sword and shield but i also gained a game with spyro jedi fallen order actually seems like it might be a pretty good game now I know before I said that I wasn't very impressed at all at E3 because it really just looked like a generic third person action game. And then after that I wasn't going to buy it until it was squeaky clean of any amount of BS. And it is! There's no microtransactions, no tomfoolery going on with this game. So I'll be buying this game now in the near future to support the developer that made this game, support single player Star Wars games and to show EA that not everybody wants a half-assed multiplayer game. I'm going to start doing a new section called Game Highlights, where I just talk about a specific game that's probably unknown to most people and shed some light on it. So the first game I will introduce in this section is Crease Tales. Crease Tales is an indie game that is a love letter to turn-based RPGs like as you're exploring the towns, you're actually able to use this time mechanic to warp between like time periods and use them to solve puzzles. And then also in the combat, there's this timeline at the top that they said that is going to be implemented like a little bit later on because it said in the demo that some people said it was too uh, simple. That you can actually manipulate the timeline. So it kind of reminds me of a uh, Child of Light combat system looks very interesting and they actually have a demo out on PC I'm not sure if it's still there because this came out like around E3 time I think July or June and they actually did what the Octopath devs and the Damon X Machina devs did where they actually take in fan feedback to improve the game which that should just be a standard now at this point I feel for all games not just independent games or smaller games that builds up so much more trust I feel with people knowing that they have an input and they're actually making a difference to this game that they're looking forward to 
and having that direct communication. So definitely go check out the demo if you can and also go check out this video that I'm playing in the background. It's a video where they're responding to fan feedback. Switch, PS4, Xbox One, and PC. So be on the lookout for this one. So that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. I might not have another video up until after Christmas. I don't know. We'll see. I'm thinking about making like a really <laughs> interesting video, but we'll see how that turns out. Until then, have a Merry Christmas, and I'll see you guys next time.